Hello and welcome everyone. It's the 2nd of October and um, we're driving home. We've got Phil East from Profit Improvers, our business growth specialist. How are you, Phil? Great, thanks, Glennis. Yourself? Awesome. Beautiful day today. Unbelievable, it was. It Still was going. unbelievable. And, um, and we've got myself from uh, a from more customers, more profit. Sorry, I, I got a little bit tongue-tied then. Um, so I work with business owners and I help you create automatic lead generation funnels for your business as part of my process. And, um, and I help you triple your leads and double your profits, basically. And why, are, yeah, it's pretty big stuff. That is. Why are we talking on the drive home tonight? Well, we're working in with uh, Referrals Over Breakfast, the Rob Academy, and what we're doing is we're showcasing a lot of people who are part of the Rob group and their skill set so that you get to know, like, and see what sort of skills and what sort of thing, uh, people we've got in our group. And uh, tonight we're highlighting Phillies from Profit Approvers. So it's going to be just you and I, Phil. We're going to have oh. a good little chat tonight about, and you're going to talk to us about how to rid, Thanks, get please. rid of ineffective marketing forever. That's right. So <clears throat> there's plenty of people I know that um, around the place that aren't really getting the uh, results they they deserve for the money they for they money they spend or or whatnot, um, and a lot of it's um, a lot of their marketing is ineffective. Mm. Um, you know, people wouldn't know. Some people would or wouldn't know whether it was effective or not. Um, measurements the key whether they're getting any. Um, leads or sales or anything through the website, uh, what's happening with their uh, ad in the paper or on the radio, how are they, how they measuring it or, or whatnot. So people, um, and there's other people that measure it and think, oh, well, I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing a good job, which most of the time they are. And they're getting some results and they think that's as good as it gets. Got it. So, yeah. I know from experience, and you know from experience. Absolutely. I've wasted hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing over my 30 plus years in business. Yeah. And uh, learned a lot of lessons. And the goalposts keep changing, Phil. So you've got some fundamentals on what we could be doing to get rid of ineffective marketing. I know you're going to share that with us tonight. That's right, Glenn. So I've got going to go through uh, a couple of things there and give us. There'll be three simple tests that you can do on your own marketing. Yep. And um, have a bit of a critical look at your own marketing and see what you, you think and then make some changes so that you move it into the effective side of the ledger. And we'll also um, might even share uh, the, uh, to make it a bit easier to make some more improvements. We'll share the uh, conversion equation. Oh, sounds great. So three, um, three, year, three simple tests that we can take home with us today, straight away. And the, going over the conversion equation, which is converting them from leads into, how to convert from leads into sales. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep. okay, so, great. Um, actionable, take them home, do them. Do them now. Do them straight away. So they're That's actual. It. Excellent. I love, I love things that we can do because yeah. most people that you and I probably talk to don't implement things, right? So they That's know right. it, but they don't actually implement it. So they don't actually know whether it works or not, but they tend to say it doesn't work because they haven't implemented it. So, um, so it. great that you're going to give us some actionable items and they're not going to be hard. That's it. So... Um, I suppose the first thing that people need to uh, get in their head is what marketing is supposed to supposed to do, and most of the time that's just to you got to capture your market. Yep. Okay. Give them a bit of hope that what you've got to offer is gonna gonna help them. Yeah. And then make it easy for them to buy. Mm. Okay. So that's easier um, said than done, Phil, because most people don't know how to write down. What them what they want the audience to know, isn't it? Well, we'll, we'll test how I've gone tonight, and you can All get right. your tea, okay? So, I want to capture the attention of our market, and I think 
they need to, uh, it'd be good for them to know more about uh, strategic versus tactical uh, marketing. Okay. Yep. Now, I believe if I just put that up, people might think, well, that's a bit dry and not tune in. <laughs> so, but if, so if I make something, a, a headline or something that's more attractive to my market and tell them they'll get rid of their ineffective marketing forever, well, that might yep. get an interest. And then if I let them know that um, we're going to even give them some more tools to improve their, their marketing, well, all of a sudden they might be more interested and I didn't put it on there before I threw in the conversion equation. That might get them over the line. They've got to click the thing to sign up for tonight's call. So probably could have been done better, but I was sort of following that, following that same uh, thing through about what we're supposed to be doing with our marketing. Yeah, no, I got that. And I just want to say, I want to welcome. So what I didn't say before, I want to welcome all of our people on tonight. I know we've got a few in attendees um, mode. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And, um, and Phil's going to give us some great actionable items that we can take away and apply to our marketing straight away. So fire ahead. Will we just let you go and then I'll cast questions at the end? Or we'll you, take yeah, questions. You, can, yeah. you can ask them whenever you, whenever you think I'm not making sense, Glennis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I usually, as you know, We've had some um, great um, great guests on the on the webinars today, and um, you were sensational last week. If if you haven't seen uh, last week's, make sure you you get on the uh, the Rob uh, site and go back and review last week's because there's plenty of gold in there, Glennis. Yes, lots of and gold. You'll know that I usually write notes as I go. Well, I I've do, but to, tonight you're going to be doing not doing that. I'm going to do no, it. No, because I've had to actually write my notes first. So if I'm looking down, I'm not disinterested. I'm just checking my notes, okay? Okay, got it. Awesome. Right. <laughs> Fire ahead, Bill. As I mentioned before, there's, there's two um, main um, components to marketing, and that's strategic marketing and tactical marketing. Hmm. So your strategic marketing is basically um, what you say, and, and how you say it. Yeah. And your tactical marketing is um, where you're saying it. So whether it's an ad or whether it's on your website or uh, if you're going to a trade show or something like that, that's your, that's your tactics or on the radio. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> the strategic part of the marketing and what you're actually saying and how you're saying it is on the whole, a hell of a lot more important than where you're actually saying it. I know they all both, they, they all matter, but you can get away with saying it in the wrong spot if what you say uh, resonates. All yes. right, so um, I suppose what, um, what we want to do there is People, most of the time, if they something's not working, they go, oh, I don't advertise on radio, it doesn't work, or the paper doesn't get me any results, or oh, I've been doing this paper click and I don't get anything, da, 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 da. And they blame the tactics. When generally what is wrong is their strategy is not, not right. Yeah. And what they're saying is not actually interesting to their target market or it's not appealing to them, or it's not giving them enough information as to why they're so bloody good at what they do and why they should just shut up and take my money. Okay, so, I mean, these, um, this strategy and some of these uh, things and the way we, we say things, I mean, you and I know they've worked in hundreds and hundreds of businesses across many different industries. It's not oh, that won't work for me, my business is different. It, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a business broker, a financial uh, planner, an accountant, a baker, uh, they're all the same thing. You've all got to actually talk to and appeal to your, uh, your audience. I think I find, I find, Phil, that a lot of people don't actually take the time to do that, um, to do that, uh, you know, like work out who their real target market is. 
And when I do suggest to them they do that, they're scared because I'm telling them to break it down into a small, a small thing, you know. That's right. Who but is they're scared because they think, oh, no, I'm not going to go out to a whole lot of people and so my marketing is going to be ineffective. But that is the wrong thinking, isn't it? The riches are in the niches, as they the say. The riches are in the niches. I love that. <laughs> so, um, yes, you, 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 um, you shrink down your pool, but you're a big fish in a, in a small pond rather than being a, a minnow in the, in the ocean. Okay? But yeah. you're exactly right. A lot of people actually don't necessarily think about who their best customer is. They'll take on whoever they can get. And then you hear people complain about their customers because they don't pay them or they're, they're always... They're not the right ones or they don't want upsell. Yeah. Not because, and, and that comes from, you know, a bit of a lack of confidence or, or whatnot or no, um, no proof from anything else that something else may, may work. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, if you go back to the Rob Academy, and I think it's in the would be in about the first five lessons in there about um, how to drill down and choose your ideal customer and your ideal target market. So yeah, exactly. I know one of the um, one of the things and is an, a story that I had. Um, you know, getting people to niche in was the analogy I gave them is that if you're standing up on the the biggest building in, say, Melbourne, and you're shouting out, come to me, come to me, not a lot of people down the bottom can hear it, okay? <laughs> All right? But if you actually, and in the olden days, what a lot of people would do in the olden days, I mean, you know, 20 years ago, um, people would put an ad in a little local paper and, you know, they would say, you know, I'm the best at doing this, da-da-da-da-da, come to me. And... Locally, it might work 20 years ago, but these days people have got so savvy because we've got a lot more information out there and there's a lot of more noise coming into people that most people are switching off from that noise, right? And yep. they are wanting to, they want to reach out, they want to buy things, but only if it's relevant to them. So your marketing by, by niching into the exact market that you want, you are appealing to the self-interest of your ideal target. So you're doing the target a favor and yourself a favor because you're actually, your message is going to hit the ears of that target rather than if you stood up on a big high building and just shouted out anything. You're not going to. That's the way I look at it. It's like, it's a new way of thinking. Exactly, exactly right. You hit the nail on the head there with self-interest. With yeah. what's in it for me? That's what people want to know. Yeah. Um, and so when you're in your marketing, you need to uh, answer that question. And a catchy little um, jingle or a, or a smart, clever uh, couple of lines or, or one-liner, yeah. not going to cut it unless you've got a whole heap of brand uh, marketing dollars to throw behind it and blah, 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 blah. Oh, so uh, you're talking about like the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Yeah. And that's things that we remember all the time and everything goes well better with Coke or something, you know, they're the sorts yeah. of things that people remember, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. And they're good with, yeah, you know, years ago when they were, um, as you said, when there wasn't as much marketing around, now they're, we're just inundated everywhere. Mm. Um, it doesn't actually, doesn't cut the mustard. No. Okay, we're still trying to use them in a lot of cases. We're still trying to actually do it that way. So our customers aren't experts in what we do. No. Okay. So that's why they want our help. So what we have to do is let them know about how good we are and what we do and why they should buy from us. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how many sunrooms have you ever bought, Glennis? Uh, I, I lived for 30 years in Queensland, so I didn't actually have to buy some. 
<laughs> so do you have any idea what I am thinking of buying one in Melbourne though. Yeah. <laughs> and do you have any idea how to buy a sunroof? No. Can you can you tell the difference between a ten thousand dollar sunroom and a twenty five thousand dollar sunroom? No. Nah. So when people need to buy what you what you're selling, what they just they don't know anything. So they need guidance, they need uh, information. Education. Yeah. Um, and so your job as a business owner is to help facilitate that and make it give the prospect as much information as they can about not only about um, how to measure in that industry, but also why you are above above the norm in that industry as well. So Yeah. Yeah. So your information, so none of this stuff about look at me, look at me, I've got ninety eight years of experience in my business and you know I can do in the tax world financial statements and tax returns or da 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 da. We don't say that. We actually say right. to people out there, um, you know, do you have a cash flow problem? Hmm. You know, we've got the experience to actually help you provide a solution to that. That That's sort of thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because customers, um, they want the same thing. They, they want to feel confident that they're making the right decision. You don't yeah. want to feel like a, a goose about you've gone and paid over the odds with someone who's irre irreputable. Okay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and they, they just want to make the best buying decision um, possible and not feel like they've got to, after they've bought, or oh, have I done the right thing or haven't I done the right thing? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You, you want to get them results. That's correct. So as the marketer, you've got to figure out what's important to your prospects. You've got to let them know what makes the best deal in your industry yeah. and then show them why you have the best deal. Okay. And then you've got to let them know um, in a way that they're going to understand and believe. Okay. So one thing that people do a lot is they compete on price. Yep. Okay, because they don't actually tell people what's different about them. So the yeah, only thing that's that. different is how much do you charge and how much do you charge? So yeah. they're a bit like a commodity, like a uh, electrical company yeah. or something like that. Okay, we're all looking at what's the charge per kilowatt hour or how much discount do I get or blah, 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 blah. And there's no real differentiation. But if you can, people buy on value first. So, and they look for value, then they'll worry about the, the price. After. I can't see any value in electricity at the moment. They're all about the same. So, <laughs> you know, but I get that. So give us an example of that, you know. Well, this is something that I've heard you talk about as, as well, Glennis, and, mm. and it's uh, inside reality versus outside perception. Okay, yeah. so every business has got the reality of what actually goes on in their business and then they've got the outside perception of what people think happens in their business yeah. and sometimes they're the same sometimes they're completely different for good and good and for bad so if you've got a sensational business but your marketing says we're local and we've been around for 98 years as you alluded to that's actually not telling people how good your business is. That's it. And um, so you sort of got to be a bit more specific and let them know exactly what, what you do that's better than the industry, what you do that's great for them, how you're going to solve their problem, what, yeah. what you're going to do for them and why you're the best person for the job. Absolutely. Um, so, I think, can I just go back to like when we're talking about this value versus price and things like that, yep. um, inside reality, outside perception. So, the inside real reality for businesses is you know, your systems, your business model, your inside business model, you know, your systems and your processes and the yep. people, you know, they're all the human capital and, and how you run the business, that sort of thing. Now, yep. 
a prospect or a suspect is never going to know what you're like until they actually buy from you and experience that. So your job is to actually be able to articulate that into certain dot points. And I call them value statements, Bill. And I, you know, one of the most couple of funny ones that I had in my accounting firm was, I keep you out of jail, right? <laughs> so, and people used to always comment on that, you know, and they go, what do you mean? I go, well, you know, tax office are always hitting people and go, you know, but I didn't never let you go over the line in the law. You know, it was always, it was a very black and white area for me. Yeah. And I was never gray. And I know there are some accountants out there that do are gray, but I don't mix black and white. It's purely mm. black and yeah. white. Yeah. And um, so I, I was very comfortable in saying that. I was also very comfortable in saying that, um, you know, your, your workflow is, uh, is that your work is done in less than 30 days. So I was very confident that I had systems and processes in place because I knew other accountants didn't have that and they would take hours and hours to get that. The other thing I used to say is you will always have up-to-date financial statements so that you can get any lending you like. Mm. Now, they're the sorts of things that people value time. You know, if they hand something into an accountant, they want it back at the end of 30 days or as soon as possible. They want to know that these financial statements are readable so that lenders can give them money. And they certainly want to know that if the tax office came knocking on their door, that the accountant is going to take the interview over and do everything for them. So they were just, I have nine value statements, but yep. they're my top three. And, you know, people, people came to me for that. They didn't come to me to get financial statements and tax returns done because that's the obvious, right? That's right. That's because absolutely obvious what an accountant does. That's right. And, and generally, they're, advertising might say that they're the most professional or the fastest or, or quality the experts or yeah. the largest in the states in the state now what you've done is you've said okay i am the most professional because i have this this mm. and this i am the fastest because i guarantee i'll have it done within this time and when they go to the competitor and the competitor has nothing to say to back up what they're saying in the, because it really means nothing. That's right. It's all about what you can stand behind. As a coach, I say to people, you will get results. Yeah. So, you, work, you, you know, and you, you must say that as well. You know, you stand yeah. behind the fact that if people work with you, they get results. That's right. And as um, a, Guaranteed uh, money, money. Well, it's guaranteed that you will get results. That's it. Guaranteed. Yeah. So. Guaranteed because we know what you've got to do and we also know that you're going to take the actions to do it. Because one of the things, and I think you're a bit the same, Phil, is that we don't work with people who don't take the actions, right? That's right. There's no no point. You can't you can't steer a park car, Glynis. Oh, now that's a very, very good analogy. I can't steer a park car. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. If they're not so, moving and they're not prepared to take action. You can't help them get to where they want to get to. That's right. So for all the businesses out there listening, you know, you want to really have a look at, you know, what are you saying out there in your marketing? And are you saying just what's expected of you? You know, if you are an accountant and you say, we do tax returns and financial statements, well, so what? That's you know, it. we, uh, yeah. A, a, a bit of a list there if, for people listening. If you've got largest selection, lowest prices, best service, most convenient, mo more honest, we specialise, gets the job done right first time, been in business for 4,000 years, um, any of those type of uh, jargon, yeah. listen up because I'm about to give you the first, the first test you can do on your marketing. Okay, we better hurry up because we've got less time. We've been chatting away. So oh, yeah, what's the first test, Will? Okay, so the first time, first one is uh, to say, read your marketing and say, well, I would hope so. Okay, so I'll read something, Glynis, and then you say, well, I would hope so, and we'll see whether it's uh, yep. going to go. So if this ad for a, um, a renovation company, 
to yep. it. I'm on the highest quality. I'm fairly priced, and I guarantee a hundred percent satisfaction. You would say? I'd hope so. Yeah, right. I would hope so. I'm no different to anyone else. I'm not differentiating. No. If I'm, if I'm one of me or a consulting company, and I say our training leads to change, we increase the productivity, performance, and profit of your company. You would say? That's a bit different. Say well, that again. Say that again. Our training leads to change. Yeah. And we increase the productivity, performance, and profit of your company. Well, that's what you're hiring them for anyway, as it says. So, well, I would hope so. Yeah, that's what I'd yeah. hope so. Yeah. 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 So, if, if you've got an in, exceptional inside reality, but you're using the same jargon as everyone else, then the yeah. outside perception is the same. And so then it comes back to you're competing on price. Mm. And someone who's inferior may get the job and not do anywhere near the, 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 um, the type of quality of work that you do because you've been unable to get your message across that's so different. So what would you say? No, Have you got no. an example of like a training company? What could a training company say? Oh, well, they, they talk about, um, I suppose they talk about their process of training, what happens after they get them in the, in the workplace, um, what their success rate is, they could get on into some numbers about um, increasing their profitability. They might have their benchmarks and, and whatnot, might say, well, we average increase your profitability by 30% within such and such a, a time. You know, they need to be, if, if they're claiming to in, uh, increase productivity and profitability, they need to be measuring it to... Um, to be able to stand by it, if that's that measurement. I totally get that. So they need to be doing stuff like that. And, and they may well be doing all that, but they're not telling us that they do all that. That's right. You know, one of the things, one of, one of the, um, uh, the best, I call it a market dominating position value statement um, that we have in, our, in the Rob Academy that I've known is um, Corey Millard from Melbourne Video Business Production. And he, his one is, um, so you know how everyone's out there taking photos or doing videos, you know. But what Corey stands by is, I make you look good and feel great behind the camera. Now that, yes. that just like, yes. Mm. You know, that is what I call a great statement. That's what he puts on all over all his marketing and that's yep. what people get attracted to. Yeah. Yep. And that, yeah, gets their attention. Then they say, well, how do you do that? Or, or and yeah, and nobody's going to discount, no, price, nobody's going to price price you on that. Like, oh, shit, you really, oh, sorry, you really make me look good in front of the camera and and uh, feel great. Well, I'll pay anything for that. That's priceless. That's right. Uh, and another example of that would be, uh, say, a travel, a travel company. to do um, some holidays and get you in... Uh, sort of like a timeshare or something. So they might yep. say, um, we help people, this is a real example, they come along, so we help people uh, diversify their income portfolios while taking trips. Well, they do, but it all sounds a bit, what does that mean? So yep. from working with them, we actually changed that around to we help people make a fortune while taking dream vacations. Yeah. So that's the strategy when it comes to, it's not, it's not where you say it, it's, it's what, it's how what you say. It's yeah. what you say so, and how you say it, not where you say it. Yeah. So between that one and Corey's, yeah. sort of the examples there. So number one was... Well, I'd hope so. Not number two. Number two is who else can say that? Okay, so we're, we're moving from um, what we do to... Um, how we do it, I suppose. So um, if everyone and anyone can say um, what you do, well, you need to, uh, you need to change it. So if you've got the kitchen renovator again um, and their inside reality was second to none, but their marketing looked like exactly identical to their competitors, their marketing might say, you know, certified subcontractors, Guaranteed satisfaction, new cabinets installed, complete kitchen remodeling, 
and we accept MasterCard and Visa. So the question that we'd ask about that is, who else can say that? Who else can say that? Which and most people can. competitor can say that as well. Yeah. But not everything's going to be plum and square. <laughs> but they can still say that. I need to revisit my marketing and go, well, okay, anyone can say that. And yeah. whether or not they do it does not matter, but they can still say it. Yes. Okay. That's right. And people can do that. And people do do that, unfortunately. There are people out there who do do that. Yeah. And so that's where getting out again, getting into your inside reality and why you, what you do that makes you better. So different. And how yeah. you go about your business and getting that out there in your marketing makes a, a massive difference. Who else yeah, can that. say that? Okay. It's not what you do. What uh, It's not who can do what you do. It's only who can say what you say. What you say. Yeah. So that's number two. So they're pretty simple, aren't they? We said they're pretty simple, but you got to apply them in reality. Fun. So yeah. So I I get um, you know people are probably listening in here and they're going yeah okay well I can do that. Who else can say that? Well, everyone can say that. So what do I have to do to actually stop? You know what do I actually have yeah. to do so that I say something different? What would you ask yourself? What would you say to yourself um, so that you could change that around? Well, I'd probably, I'd probably go through and I, I'd probably jump on the Rob Academy. Yeah. And I would, I would um, go through a couple of the early lessons where it t tells you about um, how to um, identify your best customer and yeah. why you do what you do and what their problems are and what problems you're solving. And from there, look at your business and go, well, okay, that's the problem I'm solving. What am I doing to solve that? And let people know about that. Yeah, and look, I think, you know, for everyone listening, you got access to the Rob Academy. It's in, my, it's in week seven, video seven of the 52 week learning series. There's a, a business um, matrix, business messaging matrix in there. And once you've picked your ideal target market and you know who they are and what their biggest problem is, then you can easily come up with the messaging that you need to be able to have them be attracted to you using your own inside reality. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Good, good work, Phil. Well, What's well, number three? I'm a bit number dying three. number three number here. Three, the yeah. third and final. Okay, you've heard of the scratch and sniff test. This is the scratch. Scratch out and write test. Okay. What did you say? In scratch and sniff. Is that like you know, like gold lotto stuff? Yeah. Well, I'll just say that wasn't there used to be scratch and sniff cards back when they you had strawberry flavour and all that. Am I revealing too much information? Oh, I think you probably. I don't know. And all that sort of stuff. I'm going back a little bit. Apologies. No, I can say you're dreaming, but yeah, I won't say that. But anyway. <laughs> so we've got the scratch out and write in test. Okay. Yeah. So have a look at your marketing. Get a brochure, get one of your ads, get your website, whatever you want to, whichever you want to do. So all of those are your tactical elements. Glenna, something like that. Yep. Your yep. Website. So all your yeah. tactical stuff. Well, yeah, uh, check your strategy by the scratch out and write in. So what I want you to do is scratch out your name and put in one of your competitors' names and see if the ad still makes sense. Yeah, well, it, it better not because if they've copied off me, I'm not going to be a happy chappy. Well, know? if you do that, if you take all your marketing and put in your uh, competitors' um, name, and it all makes sense, and it's all stuff that they could say, and it's all relevant to them, you're in big strife. Mm. Because you're not differentiating from your competitors. Yeah, I got okay? that. Your, your, all your stuff is just saying the same as what anyone else is saying, and therefore, you are the same as your competitor. So you're not... Okay, because your inside reality is that you're a, you're a damn good business and you do things so much better 
So you just have to convey that to your, to your audience and to your prospects. Yeah, no, I got that. And there's a story about that where somebody did copy um, somebody else. It was in the in the trades area, yeah. And um, he was he didn't realise it was an older guy and he had a website and he had a uh, it wasn't me it was another colleague of mine another business coach and um, they had a look at his website and then they looked around at other people's websites around the local area. And they found that there were two, a couple of people that actually had exactly the same. They had copied and pasted off him. And yep. he was absolutely flabbergasted. He just didn't know that people would actually do that. But people yep. do that. Yeah. Sad, yeah, but true. Them, it's already the same. Well, you know, the strike yeah. up is probably a bit rude, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, to read. Well, how do we fix it, Gladys? What's you that? asked before about a good way to fix it, okay? So we've yeah. got our three tests. What have we got, eight minutes, have we? We've got eight minutes, but we've got some questions coming well, in. Can I, well, can I just, I promised I'd say to go through the conversion equation. Yeah. So, because this is going to help fix their jargon problem as well. Okay, let's get through the okay, conversion so the equation. The conversion equation has four parts. Yeah. So it's interrupt. Yeah. Engage. Yeah. Educate. Yeah. And offer. But tell me more about that. Engage, educate, and offer. Yeah. Okay, so your first thing you need to do is get someone's attention. And to get someone's attention, you've got to get them out of, you've got to disrupt their reality and get them out of their just cruising. Normal thinking. Hey, I've got your, I've got your attention. Yeah. Um, Usually a headline does that, and a headline in the conversion equation usually would relate to um, one of their hot buttons. So it's something that they're, uh, a problem that they have that they don't want, okay? okay. yep. So if uh, I've got a, I've got a, one of a good one here, it says, are you suffering from dry skin scars, stretch marks or wrinkles? Well, that would disrupt me and get my attention if I had some of those. Yeah. If you want some good headlines, there's a headline bank in the Rob Academy. There is. I, I know. Were, I made the mistake because I thought I'll print those out. <laughs> uh, there's 22 pages of headlines. Okay. So if you're stuck for a headline, Go through there, adapt them for what you want to do. How to reduce X by up to 93% by eliminating Y and from your Z. Like, stuff like that. So there's a whole bunch of them in there. there. Absolutely. Is a, is a massive amount. Number two is engage. Okay. Yep. So engage gets person to, to read a bit further. Okay, gets them a little bit more involved, and your engage usually lets them know that there's a, uh, a there's a solution that you have. That they yeah. Want. Okay, so you've told them about the problem they've got that they don't want, and then you're telling them that you've got a solution that they don't have. Do you mm. think that's going to get them a bit excited? Well, it's going to be better than saying I've been in business for ninety eight years, and um, you know, come to me because I've got best quality. That's for that's sure. Right. Yeah. So, well, on this one, it says, if you suffer from acne scars, dry skin, you know, here's some really great news. It goes through all the stuff and tells them there's some really great news. So they're going, oh, he's got some great news for me. You beauty. I'm going to read a bit, read a bit more of that. Okay, great. Then there's educate. Okay, so this is where you can talk about um, your solution, why it's better, why it's good, what your processes are, how you go about. Uh, what you do and why your solution is the best solution for your prospect. For well, the prospect, yeah. Uh -huh. And sometimes, depending on the ad, sometimes it has to be short and sometimes it can be, uh, it has to be, it can be long. Don't worry about it being long because if people are interested, they'll want to know and if they're not, they won't read it. They'll go straight to number four, which is the offer. The call okay. to action. One of my original mentors in marketing, Dan Kennedy, the great Dan Kennedy, he's a bit crook at the minute. His number one rule 
is there will always be an offer or offers. So if you're putting marketing out there and you don't have any offer, you need to get an offer. Okay. That's so, it. So yeah. this one, this one's got an offer of buy one, get one for nothing and a hundred percent money back guarantee. So they've that's got a two. That's two offers. They've got a promotional price, so you get five dollars off, and then you get an extra bonus of something worth fifty bucks for for free. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't like it, the money back guarantee, so no risk. Yeah, that's great. Easy for me to buy. Easy for me to buy. So. Well, I'm going to wrap you. We're going to have to wrap up because I need to up. summarize what's going on here, Phil. And I've well, got a couple of bit, questions. Took a bit slow at the start, didn't I, Glennis? Oh, you're a little bit start, slow out of the bat, out of the, out of the. What do you call it <laughs> when the horses run? I'll, I'll <laughs> out of the building. gate, slow I'll out of the gate. Building, building. But anyway, We're that, building. I've got a couple of questions. Um, I've got some thanks in here from Aaron and Selena and Joan. They're always on our site. Thank you for joining us tonight. And they've just said, thanks, Phil. There's a lot of great value in that. How can I contact you? So I'm just going to say, hey, go to Profit Improvers at Gippsland. Leave a review, something along the lines of Profit, profit uh, Improvers equals value or yeah, great okay. value and what I've learned from Phil. Um, if you can leave a message like that, but also have a chat to Phil um, from his Facebook page. Um, so that's Profit Improvers Dash Gap Gippsland um, for that. So there was a big thing there. The other thing that, um, and we may not have time for you to answer that tonight, but you can have a quick, quick um, chat about that. Is the is all of this stuff in the Rob Academy? Like you know, you mentioned, and and this is from um, Tom. You know, there was, is there all this stuff? You talk about the Rob Academy. How do I get into the Rob Academy and, and da, 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 da. Do you want to quickly answer that a little bit, Phil? Uh, how do you get into it? Yeah. That's probably more a question for you. you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Into... I'll, I'll answer that. Yeah. But you, it's all in the Rob Academy, isn't it? It most certainly is. It's an online uh, powerhouse. Um, yeah. There is, I still find stuff in there that I didn't actually know was there. Um, <laughs> Every time I go in there, like, oh, and then other times I'll go back in there and I think, oh, that's right, I forgot about that was that was there. And the amount of information I, I can tell you, it it can it it'll tell you, show you how to do postcard advertising, sales letters, TV, radio. Uh, it'll get your market dominating position on your elevator pitch on the go. It'll help you with risk and reversal. Uh, create membership sites, landing pages, copywriting, email marketing, video marketing, online product launches. It goes on, and I'm going to stop Passive you there. Man. You sounded like you were calling the, the horses at the Mountain <laughs> Club. Um, so here's the thing, everyone, is that you're listening here. The Rob Academy is an online site that's going to help you with everything you need around growing your business. It's heavily geared towards sales and marketing and um, it's got the latest stuff in there. If you don't have access to that, you want to jump on to um, academy.referralsoverbreakfast.com and have a look at that. And you could join up to the Referrals Over Breakfast group. Um, and we have a, a promotion going at the moment. If you do join the Rob um, Referrals Over Breakfast group, you do get the cost of the whole program, which is in excess of uh, $1,500 for the year. Um, you get that included in your membership, which is of a huge value. So look, it's a value offer. Yeah, it is a value offer. Now, I just want to thank Phyllis from Profit and Profit Improvers, who's our business growth expert, for sharing with us three tests that you can use to get rid of ineffective marketing forever. And also went through the conversion equation tonight on how you can message out your marketing. Thank you, Phil. I want to um, just allude us to something very exciting that's happening next week. So next week we have Natasha, Nafasa, I should say, Nafasa um, from Studio Hawk. She's a senior SEO specialist and Nafasa is going to be demystifying and explaining SEO to us, the SEO basics, all right? So um, I want to thank you all for joining us on the Drive Home webinar tonight, especially you, Phil. You've been a wealth of information as you always are. Don't forget, jump on Profit Improvers dot, uh, get, what is it, Profit Improvers dash Gippsland. Um, and uh, tell Phil how great he's been tonight. Um, it would be also good. 
Um, and join us again next week. We're going to have Nafasa from Studio Paul talking to us about SEO. Until then, have a super productive week. Um, and I'll catch up with you again next Wednesday. Thanks, Glass. You're welcome.